Hi, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to create a semi solid yarn using some Jacquard acid dyes and the Superwash Merino yarn Swish Worsted from Knit Picks. I am pre soaking our yarn in some tap water for a minimum of 20 minutes. Since our goal is to create a semi solid yarn today, I am going to be adding the yarn to a hot dye bath so we get some variations of color. I am going to start by adding three tablespoons of white vinegar to my dye pot. When you're dyeing with acid dyes, you need to have some acid present. Frequently with food coloring, I do two tablespoons and eight cups of water. So I decided three and 12 would give us that same concentration. Next, I am going to add the dye. And today I am going to use one cup of a 1% stock solution in fire red. Now, one cup of dye is about 240 milliliters. Since we're dyeing 100 grams of yarn, this should give us a total on weight of goods, or OWG, of about 2.4%. Um, two we're at just below a simmer. I'm going to reduce the heat a little bit and get ready to add our yarn. Swish is a really fun line of yarn. It is a super wash yarn, so I know that it'll absorb the dye quickly but it's one that is really soft and that I really enjoy playing with. So I just squeezed out some of the excess water from our yarn and now I am going to quickly add it to the dye bath and then use a slotted spoon to gently agitate it a tiny bit. And the reason for that is that I want the dye to have access to a lot of the yarn to get a really nice intense color. If you you could if you wanted a little more variation, you could add the yarn to the pot quickly and then step away, and then you would get an even less even color. So even if we get something that ends up looking really solid, when you knit it up, you might see some really, really subtle variations. But this is something that I've done a lot more with food coloring versus the acid dyes. And so just so you can see, there is you know, a lot of color still in the pot. Oh yeah, I can move it to the side and you can see that too. But one other key here is that if you want an even more solid color, use a, the larger volume of water will slow down the absorption of the dye as well. So then you can get uh, more even coverage. The more crowded the pot is, the more sort of variation you will get. I'm gonna let this sit for 10 minutes and then we'll come back and check on it. It's only been a little over four minutes, but the dye bath has already cleared considerably. The 10 minutes are up and there is only a tiny bit of color left in the dye bath. And we've got this really rich well, cranberry feeling saturated red in the pot. I am going to turn off the heat and let the yarn sit in the warm pot for another 15 minutes or so, and then we will remove it from the dye bath. All right, after cooling for 15 minutes, I am going to remove our yarn, and this color is so, so pretty. It is such a deep, rich, and saturated red. Um, and you can even see, maybe not on camera, but to the naked eye, that we definitely have some gorgeous, gorgeous, subtle, subtle tones in there. And the dye bath is almost completely clear. So sometimes letting your yarn cool in the pot can help get that last bit of color into the yarn, but you don't have to keep adding additional heat. We are ready to wash our yarn. <laughs> These reds are phenomenal. And, oof, I am really, really excited. Oh wait, before I add soap, 
check it out. All of that color is in the yarn. None of it is bleeding out as we add this to more water. Now we might keep some, nope. We've got a gorgeous, gorgeous red yarn. And I'm gonna rinse it a few times to wash out the rest of the soap. And then I'll hang it up to dry. Wow, this is red. That is basically the way that I would describe our finished dried yarn. We have such an amazing depth of color with this cool red that is definitely a red, not a purple, but is almost a bluer red than say a fire engine red, even though this red color is called fire red. The amount of dye that we used for this project was about 2.4% on weight of goods. And this was enough to give us an extremely deep, saturated color that when this knits up, we will get some amazing tonal variation of these red shades. This is a red that is hard to capture on color, but hopefully I got something that is pretty close. When you move the yarn in different directions, you can get a sense of some of the tonal variation that we see in this beautiful yarn. This yarn color is rich, saturated, and the tonal variation is so delightfully subtle. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I release at least two new dyeing videos every week and do frequent live streams, and you really don't want to miss them. If you would like to support Chemnitz on a more personal level, check out the Chemnitz Patreon. You can find the link in the video description. Thank you for watching!